Okay, so we're talking about chemical changes, but we're gonna go into the chemical changes and we're gonna talk about specific types of chemical changes. One of the most common ones in the salon that we want is oxidation. So the best example is hair color. The term oxidation refers to a chemical reaction that combines a substance with oxygen to produce an oxide. Another example of oxidation is wood turning into charcoal after burning. So when you're working with hair color, um, if you, you know, permanent hair color, you wanna lift the hair but deposit color. If you take that tube of color and just put it on the hair, it's not gonna do anything. If you take that peroxide and put it on the hair, it'll do barely anything. Maybe it'll lighten a little bit, but not much. It's the marriage of the peroxide and the hair color that cause the oxidation reaction that allow the hair to lift and then deposit the, co Ooh, deposit the color. Oxidation allows those color molecules to, when they're in the hair, to swell and grow bigger, coloring it a nice red or brown or blonde. Um, oxidation reduction, also known as a redox reaction, is a chemical reaction in which oxidizing agents is reduced by losing oxygen and the reduction agent is oxidized by gaining oxygen. So with an oxidation reaction or reduction reaction, think about, um, um, it's kind of hard to you know understand this one because this one's a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, even though the word order is reversed, redox is used as a contraction of the term oxidation reduction. Um, that's just kind of explains how, if you hear those two terms, know that they're the same, oxidation reduction is the same as redox. Um, I have to look at additional reactions that occur with that because there's a few, but I know that typically um, a reduction reaction is what perms. Um, so an, I guess and I, you know a good example of that kind of reaction redox would be perms because when you're doing a perm, it's different. You're not marrying that um, peroxide and um, perm solution that will cause a different reaction. Hair color is oxidation. So an, oxi an oxidizing agent is a substance that releases oxygen. So that's right underneath this. Um, hydrogen peroxide H2O2, which can be thought of as water with an extra atom of oxygen, is an example of oxidizing agent. A reducing agent is a substance that adds hydrogen to a chemical compound or subtracts oxygen from the compound. When the hydrogen peroxide is mixed to oxidation hair color, oxygen is subtracted from the hydrogen peroxide, and the hydrogen peroxide is reduced. At this time, oxy oxygen is added to the hair color, and the hair color is oxidized. In this example, the hair color is a reducing agent. Think of it like this, um, in layman's terms, when you mix hair color and peroxide, over time, that peroxide is going to go down. It's not gonna be stable, it's gonna stop. When you mix hair color, it is really only viable for about 45 minutes, with the exception of high lift hair color. Um, another example is bleach. When you mix bleach, that peroxide is gonna decay over time, but it doesn't fully stop, it just gets very, very slow. A reduction is a process through which oxygen is subtracted from hydrogen and or hydrogen is added to this. Okay, I just butchered this. A reduction is a process through which oxygen is subtracted or hydrogen is added to the substance through a chemical reaction. The chemical reaction is called a reduction reaction. This is what a perm is. A perm is a reduction reaction. Hair coloring is an oxidation reaction. Oxidation and reduction always occur at the same time. Redox involves a transfer between the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. The oxygen agent is reduced and the reducing agent is oxidized. Redox reaction can take place without oxygen because the ox oxidation also can occur when hydrogen is subtracted from the substance. Redox reaction are responsible for chemical changes created by hair colors, hair lighteners, permanent wave solutions, and thioglycolic neutralizing thioglycolic acid neutralizers. These chemical services would not be possible without oxidation reduction redox reactions. Under certain circumstances, chemical reactions can release a significant amount of heat, and these types of chemical reactions are called exothermic reactions. So when you think about exothermic, um, that's heat creating, think of exo-own, exo-own heat. The best example I can give you is um, a perm. So if you take an exothermic perm, you have your perm and you have your activator. That activator is hydrogen peroxide. You put that peroxide in the perm, it gets warm. This is why if you don't rinse all the neutralizer, not the neutralizer, all of the perm solution out of the hair and you put that neutralizer on there, you can actually cause more damage because if there's too much perm solution, it will react with the peroxide and it will get very, very hot and warm. Try this at your own discretion. Take a bottle of perm and take a bottle of 40 volume developer and mix it in the, um, obviously not with the cap on because it'll be too tight, mix it uh, just openly and that bottle will get very hot. 
that's exactly what happens um, when you're doing exothermic perm, but you know to a lesser extent. Um, all oxidation reactions are exothermic reactions. An example of exothermic reaction is a nail product that hardens, pol polarizes to create nail enhancements. Um, exothermic reactions occur, but usually clients cannot feel the heat being released. Usually if they can feel the heat being released, it might be uncomfortable. Um, they do make products it can do for skincare where it uh, warms the face when you mix it with water, it gets hot briefly and it goes away. Um, those hand warmers that you use when it's cold out, that is an example of an exothermic reaction. Uh, one of the re products Red can makes, if you open it up, it's a, um, a conditioner, but when exposed to air, it gets very, very hot and very warm. And when you squeeze it out, you'll put it on, it feels nice and relaxing. So under controlled settings, an exothermic reaction is safe and it can feel relaxing to a client. Combustion, on the other hand, is a rapid oxidation of a substance accompanied by the production of heat and light. Lighting a match is an example of rapid oxidation. Oxidation requires the presence of oxygen. This is the reason there cannot be a fire without air. So a combustion is really not something that we have in a salon or want in a salon for that matter. Um, it can be very serious and very dangerous. If you take enough acetone um, for nail services and you dump it all over the floor, there is a guaranteed amount um, that it will just combust because of the sheer amount of um, you know product that will cause a rapid oxi oxidation of that. Um, certain chemicals are like that too, that if you store them you know in the heat or just by having a light source come in, that can cause a reaction to happen like that. There was a dry cleaner that burned down near me um, years ago and it was actually terrifying and that was actually caused by the chemicals. They must have been kept in a warm heat source and they went boom. If you have a combustion occur in someone's head, that is a lawsuit and you might lose your license and that's why you have to be careful when adding heat to services. All of my bleaches, um, color services, I never add heat. The only time I use heat is for deep conditioner and um, if I'm doing a uh, special um, endothermic perm, or a true acid wave is another way of saying that because the endothermic, you have to use outside heat. Um, pure substances and physical mixtures we're gonna cover now. All matter can be classified as either a pure substance or a physical mixture or blend. Pure substance is a chemical combination of matter um, in definitive proportions. Pure substances have unique properties. All atoms, elements, and molecules, and compound molecules are pure substances. The best example in the salon is distilled water or deionized water. When you're using um, distilled water for your facial steamers, the reason you're using distilled water is because water from the tap is not a pure substance. That water can have a lot of um, mineral buildup. And if you're putting that in your um, steamer machine, that will actually jam your machine and clog it up. And it ends up making it um, kind of gunky and get uh, really nasty. And it can also damage the machine, causing you to you know waste money. Um, pure water, which is a pure substance, has a pH of seven. Hard water may be, um, depending on what's in it, it could either be alkaline or acidic. It depends on so many things. I know there's always that whole talk about acid rain. That's an example of you know the water not being pure. Most substances, is another important point, do not exist in a pure um, state. An example is air. Air contains many different components to it. It can be you know clean, but it can also be polluted on the other hand. A physical mixture is gonna be defined as a physical combination of matter in any proportions. The properties of a physical mixture are combined properties of the substance in the mixture. Salt water is a physical mixture of salt and water in any proportion. The properties of salt water are the properties contained in salt and water. And in water. Um, salt water is salty and wet. Uh, most of the products cosmetologists and nail technicians use are physical mixtures. So know that um, what that's saying is when you have a physical mixture, you have multiple properties that occur. So, you know, salt water, you have the properties of salt and you have the properties of water that are very specific. A lot of the products we use um, are physical mixtures, such as this cleanser right here is a physical mixture. This um, specialized um, toner is a physical mixture because it's a bi-layer. It's also a good example of um, because this one, or no, is this? No, this is a makeup remover. Um, this is a really interesting thing because we'll be talking about this in the next section, which is going to be solutions, suspensions, and emulsions. Also, um, read the chart right here on the differences between pure substances and physical mixtures. That will help um, demystify a lot of that. Solutions, suspensions, and emulsions are all physical mixtures. There are specific types of physical mixtures. The difference among solutions, suspensions, and emulsions are determined by the type of substances, the size of particles, and the solubility of the substance. Try that little activity here. Um, it's a really fun one. It's where you take a tablespoon of sugar and a cup of hot water and you can um, make crystals and it's a really cool way of studying how you know things change. 
Also, I like this little did you know box because it talks about soaps being the first synthetic surfactants. People actually began making soaps 4,500 years ago by boiling animal fat or um, oil with wood ashes. Modern soaps are made from vegetable oils or animal fats. Traditional bar soaps are highly alkaline and combine with the minerals in hard water to form an insoluble film that coats the skin and can cause hands to feel dry, itchy, and irritated. Cosmetologists performing nail services should be aware that soaps can leave a film on the nail plate which could contribute to the lifting of nail enhancements. Modern synthetic surfactants have overcome these disadvantages and are superior to soaps. Many are milder on the skin than soaps used in the past. This is an important point to bring up because we still have, you know, people that are using really harsh shampoos and conditioners that could be irritating their hair. Mineral buildup is a really good point in here because that can impact your services. So the nail um, example was one you know, point why you want to degrease the nail and clean the nail. The same thing when you're doing um, a chemical peel in the face, you want to defat the skin first because there could be a product buildup that could react or block the chemical. On hair services, um, mineral buildup in water or certain um, products you're using that can coat the hair can make a horrible film that will block color or react violently, causing um, hair damage or a bad color job. That's why it's important to look at chelators or mineral removing treatments. So that's a little um, you know, important point. You want to educate your client why they should not be using a harsh soap on their hair scalp and face because that can irritate their skin and also um, make it appear a lot worse. So. You want to know these terms, solution, solute, and solvent. A solution is a stable physical mixture of two or more substances. The solute is a substance that is dissolved in the solution, and the solvent is a substance that dissolves the solute and makes the solution. So if you think about this, um, a solvent would be coffee, and the solute would be the sugar I add to my coffee. The combination of the sugar and coffee will be the solution. It'll be coffee with sugar in it. It's important to know, it doesn't really talk about this, but saturation, um, over time, um, if you add too much, the um, coffee can't dissolve or absorb all that sugar. So for example, if I add a few tablespoons of sugar and I stir, that sugar is gonna be mixed in there. Um, it doesn't you know, recrystallize unless you boil it. If I add way too much sugar, like a cup of sugar, um, the coffee will only absorb so much and then the sugar will still be saturated at the bottom. It won't mix anymore. So there is a definitive limit to, how much you can um, dissolve. Um, all liquids are either miscible or immiscible. Miscible liquids are mutually soluble, meaning they can be mixed together to form stable solutions. Water and alcohol are really good examples of this. When these substances are mixed, they stay mixed, forming the solution. Solutions contain small particles that are invisible to the naked eye. Solutions are usually transparent, although they may be colored. They do not separate when left Again, salt water is an example of a solution with a solid dissolved in the liquid. Um, immiscible are liquids not capable of being mixed together to form a stable solution. Water and oil are examples of immiscible liquids. These substances can be mixed together, but they will separate when left sitting still. When immiscible liquids are combined, they form suspensions. So if you think about this, this right here is immiscible. There is a layer of oil and a layer of solution. If I shake it enough, it will combine but if I let it sit, it will go back to normal. Suspensions are unstable physical mixtures of undissolved particles in liquid. Compared with solutions, suspensions contain larger and less miscible particles. These particles are generally visible to the naked eye, but not large enough to settle down quickly to the bottom. Suspensions are not usually transparent and may be colored. They are unstable and separate over time, which is why some lotions and creams can separate in a bottle and need to be shaken before they're used. Another example of a suspension is a glitter and nail polish that can separate from the polish. Oil and vinegar salad dressing is an example of a suspension with tiny oily droplets suspended in the vinegar. The suspension will separate when you leave it sitting alone. That's why you have to shake it. Um, so another version of this, and this is another better example of the salad dressing, is an emulsion. And an emulsion is going to be an unstable physical mixture of two or more immiscible substances um, substances that normally will not stay blended, plus a special ingredient called an emulsifier. An emulsifier is an ingredient that brings two normally incompatible materials together and binds them into a uniform and fairly stable blend. So an example is um, what they call mis Michel. They are these little, um, almost like lipid molecules. Lecithin is a really good example of an um, emulsifier added to salad dressing, and we will shake. When you shake it, it causes the salad to stay um, in the fixed position for longer than usual. It's added as a stabilizer and it helps preserve it. 
um, before we had this creation, we had a lot of suspensions in the salon and we, it was a pain in the butt. You had to shake the stuff and use it. A majority of stuff now will have an emulsion in there so it's easier to mix and it stays mixed for a while. Like this is a good example of an emulsion. It's still foamy and it's still combined. Um, emulsions are considered to be a special type of suspension because they can separate, but the separation usually happens very slower or over a long period of time because that emulsifier is stabilizing it. An example of an emulsion is a hand lotion. Properly formulated emulsion stored under ideal conditions can be stable up to three years. But because conditions are rarely ideal, all cosmetic emulsions should be used within one year of purchase. You always want to check the product's manufacturing directions and how long you should use it. And that's usually that little jar example I gave you um, with the number in it. So if it says 12M, that means 12 months. 24M, um, that means two years. Some of them might um, put a one and a Y, which means one year. Is That's when you want to use your product because it can become unstable. Um, some examples too. Um, I don't think it mentioned it or I went over... Um, might have gone over this. Uh, an example of something too that can separate that's a dry um, powder would be the powder bleach. Through manufacturing or just leaving it um, open, the bleach, even though it's a solid powder, can separate and that's why you have to remix it. So that's why um, certain products, even though it says it's combined, always give it a good stir. It's just good practice to get into. Um, surfactants, these are gonna be substances that allow oil and water to mix or emulsify. They are one type of emulsifier. The term surfactant is a concentration for surface active ingredient. A film that does not, oh, no, not that. Surfactant molecules has two distinct parts. The head of the surfactant molecule is hydrophilic, meaning water loving, and the tail is lipophilic, meaning fat loving. Um, following the like dissolves like rule, the hydrophilic head dissolves water and the lipophilic tail dissolves in oil. So the surfactant molecule mixes with and dissolves in both oil and water and temporarily joins them together to form an emulsion. I'm gonna go over this again because I know it's a lot of information at once. Take your five minute break and we're gonna cover oil and water emulsions, water and oil emulsions, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how the emulsifiers work.